button. Oh, okay, that's new. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got one whole cake which we cut in half, and you have one half for the top, you have the spacer in the middle, and then you have another half on the bottom. And for, for ease tonight, I'm not actually going to split and fill it, but I suppose if you wanted to, you could, and you could certainly bake a deeper cake and split and fill both halves if you wanted to. So the first thing that um, I need to do is actually drop it back into my cake tin that I baked with. I've got a just a drinks mat in here. You could put one or two of those in, keeping the greaseproof paper on the base of the cake. Drop that in so that it raises the peak of your cake um, enough for you to be able to trim. And then I'm going to take just a bread knife, serrated knife, and we're going to cut across. Of course, if you've got a crusty cake, be careful that you don't put your finger in the way of any extra force that you're going to need to apply to come off because it's very, very easy. I've done it last week. I cut my thumb just, just doing this. So it, you just need to watch out. And now I'm left handed. And this is a left handed bread knife. Can you believe you can get a left handed bread knife? It took me 52 years to work that out. I didn't realize that you can get them. Um, so having cut off the top, that makes my surface really nice and level. Of course, you don't have to do that. If you want to work with a bevel, you can. You just need to make sure that once you've got it on the card and you turn it upside down, the gap that will appear is filled in with a mixture of crumbs and buttercream. So the next thing I've got to do once I've leveled the cake is actually um, attach it to a cake card. And this is going to be the bottom of the cake, which is normally what we do. And we want that attached, um, the card attached to the bottom so that we can display it in another way other than attached to a big or bigger board. So to help me, I'm just going to apply some buttercream. Now I have, I have prepared a lot of my buttercream already because of course, it's, I don't want you to watch me bag everything up. Um, and I will talk as we go through, I'll show you how I've cut the bags to fit the piping tips and so on. But the buttercream is uh, half the quantity of butter to the icing sugar and just a dash of water to make it come together. And I've then softened it in the microwave or you could use a bain marie. And you want something that resembles creamy mashed potato, soft creamy mashed potato. And then you know that it's spreadable and pipeable. Okay. Um, whenever I adjust my buttercream, I never add more water or, or icing sugar. I actually just apply heat or cold. Okay, so refrigerate, heat or refrigerate. So this is going to be turned over onto the cake, centralized. Now, you have a choice. I'm just realizing we're a little bit blurry, so I'll reset. You have a choice. You can either melt some ganache or chocolate and apply that to what will be your board that it's going to stick onto while you're doing all the work. So you need something where it's attached so that you can scrape the sides later when we apply the buttercream coating. Um, so if you know that you don't want this to be your end display board, then it's better to put some melted chocolate or ganache on here and attach the card. So this is gonna go upside down here in a moment. Attach the back of this card to your, this is a nine inch board. Um, by just using ganache instead of double-sided sticky tape, it means you can take the cake with the small board still attached to the base of the cake off and maybe display it on a, on a pedestal uh, stand, something like that. So of course, now we're gonna spend half an hour trying to get the tape off, the backing off this double-sided tape. Um, I'm just gonna try and do this as quickly as possible. You could use PVA glue, but you would probably need to centralize the six inch, this is a six inch cake card to your nine inch cake board in advance. So it's all, um, all dry. And now I'm going to, Put that in the middle. That's, I'm just going to feel my way around that. Hopefully it's okay. Yep, that's good. And then turn it over. So I'll just give that a little bit of a press. I do happen to have one of those tins that has a base come out of it, but that's not essential. Okay. So I'll just take that 
that off. This is going to make a noise trying to get that back into the tin. Remove my drinks mat and take my greaseproof paper off. Okay. Now, I am going to just check, just look over this to make sure that it's in the middle and make sure your cake's right on that cake card as well. What we ne need to do next is actually split the cake. Uh, we'll, most of you will be familiar with this. Let's just move some of this out of the way. Things will get a bit more organized in a moment. It's just space is a, a, a premium, isn't it, isn't it, when you're on the, online because you've only got a small area for your camera. So what I'm gonna do is roughly work out where halfway is on my cake. And I'm gonna use my little cake cutter here. Just make sure if you've got one of these, you have to release the tension before you move it up the grooves. And just make sure that it is in fact in the right groove, because if it's at an angle, sometimes that can cause a breakage. I don't like using these cake cutters because they have a tendency to break. And if you haven't got one of these, the best thing to do would be to take a ruler, measure the height of your cake, and then put cocktail sticks all the way around, sticking out, and then that way you can use your knife to cut across um, through the cake and um, you should have a level cut. And for this, you do need to make sure that your cut in the middle is level because one half is gonna become the top and we don't want it to slope. Okay, so just checking the height on here, that's about right because I've got to accommodate the board height as well. And then I'm gonna use being left-handed, I'm gonna come in from this side. If you'll find that your cake is a bit crusty, then you might want to take your serrated knife and pre-score where it's gonna cut before you use your cheese wire tool because you don't want to, it to break on you, okay? And this is more kind of rather than a ratchet like backwards and forwards movement, you want to saw. It's the sawing action rather than the pulling action. So there shouldn't be much te tension on that wire. You should be able to go all the way through, keeping your tool nice and upright as you do. So we're just going to go all the way through, nice and patient. Again, if you've got a quite a crispy side, then you might want to pre-score as it's going to come off as well, so you don't tear lots of cake. One beauty to this is it doesn't cut your fingers as easily as the knife. So we're just going to slow it down as it comes off and through. Okay. So now I've got two halves. I know I've gone through, so I don't need to check that. But one thing I have found through experience is it's actually easier now to crumb coat this entire cake before you take the lid off. Um, so that would be, that process is, I've only apply that theory to fault line cakes. So if you take this off and then you've got to buttercream the whole of the top and the bottom, it's really, really difficult to not damage one half. So I'm gonna crumb coat this entire cake now and then I'm going to take one half away and just put a coat of buttercream um, on the, in the centre on the base half. So when I'm spreading the buttercream what I'm doing is working on a very thin layer. This is our crumb coat layer. It's got to just hold the crumbs. I'm not trying to give it lots of flavour and taste. The thicker coat of buttercream will be applied once this has been in the fridge for a little bit, a little while. I would say if you're doing this at home, you would crumb coat your cake and get it all assembled ready. And then you would uh, put it in the fridge maybe for about two hours. And once it's come out of the fridge, you can then apply the outer thick coat. And as long as you don't come down to this layer, you should find you won't pull any crumbs through. Of course, we're working on the bottom of the cake as well. So that gives you a bit more chance of not um, getting any crumbs into the buttercream. Doesn't matter on this layer if you do though. The best tip I can give you for this is spread like a windscreen wiper from either left to right, right to left, it doesn't matter. Don't just stop and lift because it will pull cake, okay? So just keep the palette knife fairly flat on the surface. Spread the buttercream out until you've got it all around the cake, just a thin layer. 
and then come almost to the tip of the cake and lift it up to the side of the blade and come away. And that way you shouldn't pull cake. Okay, and then we're ready to do like a, a very thin coat again around the sides. Now this coat that we're doing doesn't have to be very neat because we will hot knife it when it comes out of the fridge. So I'm just going to make sure that I buttercream all the way down to the bottom. And I can see I've actually shifted the cake a little bit, so we need to keep that in the middle of the small board. And because you put melted chocolate or the double sided sticky tape between the big board and the six inch board, you should find it will hold. And that's really important because you need that um, as you're scraping support and guides later on. It will, it will come clear later on. Okay, so we're just going to go all the way around. And with this, I've got my palette knife nice and vertical. I try very hard not to hold my palette knife at an angle like this, more like that. It's very tempting to press down more on the top. And what happens then is you end up with a cake that's got angled sides. OK, so just be mindful of that. If you've got angled sides on your cake when you finish creating, just think about how you're holding the tool and whether there's a possibility that you've actually um, hold the, the tool wonky as you've done this. It's the same when you use a cake smoother as well. You need to think about how much pressure you're putting on the top and the bottom and make sure it's equal. So I've just got um, some gaps at the base here. So I'm just clean, filling those in. You can see it's a bit of a mess at the moment. I like to make a mess. My husband stopped coming. See, before he used to see all my work, uh, used not to see all my work or my mess in the studio. Um, and now this is right by the kitchen. So he'll walk through and he'll go, oh, and he'll walk back out again because it looks such a mess, especially after a lesson. So, oh, it's not my domain. I'm not going in there. You can clear that up. At least he hasn't got to bake lots of cakes anymore. He used to bake all the cakes for the classes, but now um, now we haven't got any in person one. It's not such a job for him. So having applied quite a uh, kind of a lumpy layer there and thick in places, I need to go round and scoop off the excess buttercream that I don't need. And that can just be scraped onto the side of the bowl. Okay, so we need to Neaten it off just a fraction. Just making sure that you have, in fact, gone down to the bottom. It's worth being fussy with this layer. Now, I am debating with myself whether I offer this as a one day course because it's actually a good one to um, really learn the technique. It's one thing watching, but when you're doing with someone else there it's um it's very good and i'm just going to see how it goes tonight really and then if you know you want to do would like to do something like this you can send me an email and let me know maybe i'll do it not till the autumn though i don't want to do this one in the summer okay so that it's not perfect but it will do for the moment because we're going to hot knife it now, you've got this ridge going on at the top, which we need to sort out. And the best way to get a sharp edge on the top is to balance your knife horizontally. And we're going to press just a little bit of pressure on there. Just hold the weight of the knife on the buttercream itself that's got to be smooth. And then just draw the knife into the center of the cake. And that should give you a sharp edge on the side there and turn around. So there's a real temptation to try and cut it off by running the knife around the cake edge. But the best way I've, I've found is actually just by drawing it into the center to get that sharp edge. And again, if it's not perfect, we're going to run a hot knife over it later. So that should uh, overcome any other lumps and bumps that we've got. And each time I'm cleaning my knife, so it's not putting excess buttercream onto the cake. 
I always decant a little bit of buttercream into a small pot so that if I do incorporate crumbs, I know that it's not in my main batch, especially if I'm piping. Okay, so one last bit here, and then that will probably be okay. I feel like I need to do just a little bit of work on this section here. So I'll just take a fraction of buttercream on, just spread it from the top, straighten it from the side, and then as before, bring your knife flat and horizontal and draw into the cake. Okay, so of course we've split this one, haven't we? And we've coated it because it's easier to do it this way. And now we've actually got to lever the top half off. And I'm going to move that top half onto a board, which is actually an inch smaller. So we've got a nine inch board as a baseboard a six inch cake card that is the same size as my cake stuck to the bottom and onto the board. And the top one is gonna have a five inch board on it, okay? So um, I've gotta find, a, you can now just have to be brave, go in there. Take my five inch, pop that under, and then I'm just gonna look up underneath just to kind of make sure it's fairly centralized okay so I've, you can't see it but there's a board underneath that one which is five inches not six inches and that then I'm just going to balance um, I'm just going to pop it on this other cake board okay so that one's there and this one needs a coat of buttercream and it needs to be quite a neat coat because it might show depending on how many flowers you put in. So you could go into clean buttercream. I'm going to, I've obviously prepared this in uh, uncolored buttercream and the outer coat is gonna be green. So if I wanted to, I could put this top, the coat on here could be green as well, but most of it won't show, so it should be all right. I don't want this too thick either. So I'm just gonna spread like I did before, like I did the top. go all the way around ideally not going over the sides if you do not a problem you've just got to go back to that cleaning the sides off before you and then you'd have to probably clean off a ridge I'll do it anyway so you can see because it's a second show on um, how to get a sharp edge so all the way around try and keep this fairly even We'll go back around the sides just to take off that excess and draw it up to the top so we can scrape it off. So all of this so far is probably quite familiar to you other than the fact that we've actually coated the whole thing before we've taken one half off. And it's just to stop it being too fiddly and, and it's only through experience that, that I've changed that, but that's something I do. Okay, so again, we want to balance and draw in, clean it off, balance and draw in, clean it off, and so on, all the way around. Last couple of little scrapes, and then we can. So that's probably okay for what we need. Then we've got to dowel, okay? So if you think about it, you've got the bottom, then you've got your dummy, or this could be a cake, and then you've got the top. So this is holding quite a bit of weight. Now your doweling is going to be within the, circle, the, di the diameter of your dummy. So this is a four inch. You could, if you wanted to, actually trace round this dummy, make a circle, and that circle could be folded into thirds, and that will give you a bit of a guide as to where 
your dowels are going to go. I have got I've got something cut out. I'll show it to you in a moment, but I, I can probably visualize where this is going to go. One, two, three. So I'm just going to put a straw so it goes in and touches the surface of our cake. I'm just going to move again. We will have some more room when we're not working with cake, but I've just got to oh, move that out of the way. Sorry. Make sure this is upright. It looks angled, but it's not. It's just the screen because of the angle of the camera. And that will go flush with the surface of the buttercream on the cake. That's again. Of course, this needs to be level. Otherwise, you're going to have an angled cake. Third one in. I think three will be enough for this layer, but you could put more if you wanted to. This is only a six inch cake. Just kind of neat enough those areas. Is that a special straw, Hannah? Um, I've just used the ones from Ikea, but I don't know how easy they are to get hold of now. Um, you could use normal dowels. I mean, they're plastic again, aren't they? And they're still thrown away. I don't know really what the answer is. <laughs> Wood is probably the, the best now, but they are, they're just, uh slightly wider straws than the normal ones i think they're about one centimeter diameter now if you notice what i'm doing here i'm coating the side oops of my polystyrene dummy um i've just realized i've missed a step out but i'll just do this and then i'll talk you through the other step your polystyrene dummy is going to make contact with cake. So if you're not using real cake, then it's not ideal to have this making contact. OK, so what you would do. I have a four inch board somewhere here. You would glue or double side sticky tape. A four inch cake card because this is four inch diameter to the base of the polystyrene dummy but so the shiny side shows so you glue the card bit down and that way when this goes on you've got the food safe side of the card onto your cake okay i hope that makes sense if you are using real cake then you would need to put a card underneath and you would also need to dowel this because it's got to take the weight of the next layer. OK. So a little bit more complicated. That's probably why I prefer not to. The other thing you've got to think of is um, who's going to eat that little wedge. It's not it's not really a. For the amount of hassle involved, I feel like it's not a necessity. To have a piece of cake in here but it is a necessity to have the card shiny side down so that it's the card that the food safe side of the card is touching the cake rather than the polystyrene that's so we're just technically correct food wise Okay, so I'm making a bit of a mess here, but I'm actually having to coat this with buttercream and you could do this in advance and then it will set for you just leave it out overnight. It'll actually dry out and hold, assuming you're using butter to make your buttercream. If you're using Trex because you want white buttercream or because you want it to be uh, suitable for uh, vegetarians, vegan, um, then it's a, a will never set. So you just have to be really careful as you're handling it. So I'm just going to clean this mess off here. Just roughly because it's going to be attached to the cake anyway. My cake's not going to be eaten, so I'm not I'm not going to worry about my card. It's a bit messy, isn't it? <laughs> so this bit is going to go on here. So the dowels are supporting the cake. And then very carefully, we're going to transfer this on here. 
but initially we need some more buttercream so that we can secure it. Okay, so I've got a little bit more buttercream in here. Just um, warm that up. So if you've got buttercream, you can do all the preparation you like, but if it's cool, it's going to set on you. If it's hot, it's going to be super soft. But you do need something that resembles soft, creamy mashed potato, so it will actually act as a glue. So I don't want to put too much on here, but I just want to put uh, a little bit in the middle so that it will hold the base of the cake, which is card, because you've got your, your five inch card under there. Make it a little lumpy bumpy so that it does actually hold. And then I've just put this on a spare board. It's just sitting on the edge there so I can transfer across. And then if we give that a little kind of twist in the hope that that will rest and the weight will pull it down onto the cake. Then what we need to do is check. I just want to bring that camera down just a little bit so you can see, but I want to check that it's fairly together. So it's not coming over this side or over the other side too much. You could just use your scraper as a bit of a guide just to rest it on the surface here where your board is and just gauge whether or not you actually put that on square okay and if you need to you can just push it over a little bit you can also look at it by eye which is what i'm going to do just because you'll tell if it's slightly off i think that's not too bad if i hold that up can you see we've got a big gap in there now so that is the preparation for the fault line cake. And what I do now is I'm going to put this in the fridge and I'm going to do some piping. I'm going to show you how to make some pansies and primroses. And this is going to set because the unusual thing that happens next is that this will come back out the fridge and we have to put the flowers in first and complete our decoration within that gap before we put the outer layer on. And that's the really interesting bit about this. So I'm just gonna go and run this to the fridge and I'll be straight back, okay? If anyone wants to chat for a minute they, uh, between you, you can, of course. Won't be a moment. So while I'm uh, just clearing my surface, has anyone got any questions about what we've just done? How long do you leave it in the fridge for? I think if, um, if I had the time, I would leave it in for about two hours. Um, yeah, I would, because it, it just, it, 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 you just want to have a nice firm cake to work on. So it's a bit of a challenge just having it in there for maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just um, trying to get myself into an organized state here so I can show you the next bit. Hello, Cam. Just come in. Hello. Nice to see you. I did get your email, Cam. I haven't replied yet. Sorry. just get this out of the way. You could speed set it by putting it in the freezer. And then I would say you probably only need to leave it in there for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, 
yeah, I, I debated with that myself, but there's no room in the freezer. So I, can't, I need the room in the freezer for the flowers in a minute. Okay, is there anyone in tonight who's done no piping at all? Who's brand new to piping or fairly new to piping either with buttercream or raw icing? I haven't done any um, piping. I'm left-handed like you, Hannah. Fantastic. Big bonus, left-handed. It means that you can see what I can do and, I, and what I'm doing and, what I, and understand it. <laughs> uh, I can pipe right handy, but it's not, it's not my best work. Okay, so let's bring this. I'm probably all right with the camera like that for the moment. What I wanted to do then is, some of you have piped before, but I want to just run through very quickly how you actually put a piping bag together from cutting the bit off the bottom, because it's really interesting. When I first started piping, I had no idea how much plastic or how much paper you needed to take off the end. And that is quite critical. I have a piping bag here, which I've just got to locate. It's probably under my notes, so I won't, I'll just have a little rummage for it. That or it's fallen on the floor. No, it isn't. It's there. It's just invisible because it's clear. Okay, so I've got a clear piping bag here, but you can use any piping bag. To be honest, the best ones I've found are just the cheap um, blue, really big 20 inch long ones. And that way you can use them for anything from piping cupcake mixture into cupcake cases or um, big volumes of buttercream. Um, and just trim it down to size if you've got smaller volumes of buttercream. Um, and they're just much cheaper than these clear ones. Uh, so they either will do. I'm more using couplers. If you don't have couplers, it means that you need to make sure that you've got enough bags of the color. So say you wanted to make yellow, but you wanted to use three piping tips with yellow. You would have to have a bag for each piping tip if you don't have a coupler. The coupler means but once that's in, you can just interchange your piping tips. So it just means you need one bag of yellow, one bag of green and so on. OK, now, if you were just putting a piping tip into a bag without a coupler to know how much to cut off, what I do is put the tip of the piping, the, right, the point of the piping tip right up by the point of the piping bag. And then I kind of look at the, the piping tip and go just short of halfway. And I'd snip here with a pair of scissors, just as a guide, and then I'd take the piping tip away and cut across. Now, uh, we're going to do the same thing with the coupler. But we put that in the bag, it's easier to get a guide. And if you notice, a lot of them have actually got like a U-shape cut out of them. And if we push the coupler, so it's, it comes in two pieces, I've taken the screwy bit off. And this piece goes into the bottom of the bag all the way to the end. And then when it can't go in anymore, I find the U cut out piece and we just score across the back of that U, so the bottom, the bit that's closed up. And then if you push your bag, your, your cup out of the bag a little way, locate your score line. Yep. I'm doubting myself a little bit there. And then uh, you cut straight across, having pushed the coupler out of the way. And then when you push that back through, it should come, the bag should come to where that U piece is. I would say you don't want to cut shorter than the first thread off. And that way then we can just put our piping tip on whichever one we want and to secure it, to stop the piping tip from dropping off and also from anything oozing out of the bag you screw it tight. And when you need to, you can unscrew and change your piping tip. Simple as that, the best invention ever. You can buy them for the bigger piping tips as well, but they're huge, which means you do need rather a lot of buttercream in your bag before you start. So the next thing I wanted to show you is um, how I prepare the buttercream to go in. And this is something that a lot of you know, Pam, Pam, Pam Parrot at ITEAM. Uh, in Kenley, the shop, I think, craft. 
and um, she showed a tip to us years ago when we, when we first started teaching at the shop um, and it stuck with me because it's such a genius idea and it's about being able to load your buttercream into cling film before you actually start piping and that way when you put the buttercream sausage into here it means if you need to reload or if you need to wash out the bag because I always use my bags three four five times you are throwing the cling film away but you're reusing the bag many more times than oh my goodness it's so greasy and mucky I can't be bothered I'll throw it away so I've prepared a lot of the buttercream already but I've just kept one um, lot back and this is dark purple so that I can show you some pansies and I've just got to check the consistency. I always, always um, warm it up and lock it back on the side of the pot before it goes in. So don't just scoop it into the bag. You need to have something that is air, fairly air free. So in here you can see there's, I don't know if I can get that. Can you see the pits, the little indents, the little holes in? You need to press the knife against the pot to get rid of those a little bit like you would with raw icing and the more preparation you do with the buttercream the better your piping will be if you just literally pop it from the bowl into your bag then you're going to be disappointed with the result it will be very cracky and teary and airy microwave um, if you're going to warm it up and use a microwave then you have it on your lowest defrost setting and then you would um, just put it in there for maybe two seconds, three seconds, and give it a stir and judge whether you need to add any more heat to it. Uh, really important, just a couple of seconds on low will be enough to melt that butter sufficiently to make it like that lovely, soft, creamy mashed potato consistency. Now, once you're done, I've actually um, had made, measured these out into pots earlier on. I've got the cling film that it was wrapped the, that was wrapped around the top and this I'm just going to drop into my piece of cling film for dual purpose. Excuse me that. All in. Another little tip for you as well is if you're preparing lots of colours it's a real pain to have to keep washing everything up. So if you do it in an order that means you don't have to wash up in between. It's going to help you massively. So when I prep my buttercream, I start off with the quantity that I need uncolored. Actually, I should, I'll tell you, carry on that conversation in a moment, but if I should show you what I've just done here automatically. I've brought the two ends together and I'm rolling down and then I'm twisting the sides to make a sausage. Okay, so have it in a bit of a, a sausage shape because it's easier to go into the piping bag. And then it doesn't matter if there's a bit of air in here because that will squeeze out directly you push uh, the buttercream through the tip. Cut just one end and then if you put the cut end into the bag first, push it in as far as you can, if you need to you can just kind of take it down. Squeeze the buttercream into the end, and then you're, you can put a band on there if you want. I've got these little Wilton bag ties. You get about 12 in a packet. They're about £4.65, which is quite a lot of money. But I've never broken one, and I've had these for about eight years now. Um, but it's brilliant because with a normal plastic um, elastic band, you would need to keep twisting and turning this one. As it's open, you just put it behind the bag, stretch both ends, and then put the end that hasn't got the tab over the tab. And now that's all secure. And when you're ready, you just pull it and it comes off. They're quite genius, really, called Wilson bag ties. Uh, yes, go back to the preparation of the colours. If I show you my little rainbow of colours here that was ready to go. Um, and the order I'm showing you now is the order I coloured them in. So you can work with one pot and use your 
that one colored, make your own colored. Then you add yellow because there's cream in yellow. You don't have to wash your pot out to do your green because there's yellow in green. You don't have to wash the pot out for dark green because there's dark, light green and dark green. Then you have to clean your pot and do your purples. So that way you've only got one wash in between, which is really good. It's good for me anyway. So what I'm going to do now is show you um, how to pipe some of the flowers. And while I'm doing that as well, I will do the instruction and then let, you can unmute yourself and we'll talk because I've got to do a few of these. Um, so we've got enough to go into the cake. And my cake needs a little bit longer to um, to dry, uh, to uh, to set as well. So it's, it's not a problem. I'm just going to locate a flower now, which I know is in my little pot here. Apologies for the rushing, all the rustling. And I have actually got a little petal guide here, but you could draw that with a pencil onto your onto the piece of greasy paper, paper yourself. And if you're worried about it going onto the back of your flower, if you work normally on this, when I cut these squares of grease proof, they curl one way. So it's better to put them on the flower now so the curl is down. Which means if you trace the outline onto the curl up side, then you're not going to transfer that onto your flower. OK, so you can do it yourself. You don't need to have something like this. So I'm going to use this tonight. So some of the flower nails as well have got little markers on the actual nail. It's just got a little spike in there, so it's a bit of hands free. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do a big, a big pansy. So I've got some purple in here. This is a 104 petal um, piping tip. So I'm just going to put a little bit of buttercream onto the sticker itself and then stick on a piece of grease proof paper. So what we're going to do is pipe everything on grease proof and then they're going to go in the freezer and within 10 minutes they're set enough Okay, so quite, quite quick to set. So I'm going to start with my light purple. And with pansies, you've got like a, if you can visualize, you've got the two heads, kind of two rounded parts at the top as the head of the flower. And then it's got frillies for the bottom, which I call the chin or the beard. Okay, now... I find it easiest to do the frilly, the bottom bit first. So showing you as well how to hold the bag easily. If you put the tag end, so it could have a freezer clip in there, it makes it a bit difficult, but if you've got a band on there or no band, you can pipe without and just clamp your fingers shut. So if you're right-handed, you'll be doing it this way, okay? then. Once you've closed your fingers, take the tail of the bag all the way around in between your middle and pointing finger and bring it back into your thumb and close and twist. By twisting, you make the tension, everything's nice and plump and tight. And when you squeeze, you're only using these fingers. So you're not putting pressure on your wrists and you're not putting pressure on your knuckles. It's only this area here that's a little bit pressured, which is probably the strongest part of your hand. So being left handed, I'm going to put it into the crease of my hand here, wrap it around my finger, back through into the crease, close up, twist to make it nice and tight, and I'm ready to go. And I've only got pressure going through on my fingers. My wrist is not feeling it at all. Okay. Um, and I had to find that way because I actually managed to uh, dislocate this knuckle. And it, I was quite terrified at the time because it was only because I was trying to squeeze some really firm buttercream through. And I should have stopped and readjusted it. And this just went sideways, kind of jumped over the, and I've still got something funny going on there, but it, I thought, well, I'm done. I can't pipe anymore. 
um, and I, I kind of uh, Googled, <laughs> I Googled how to hold a piping bag and then there was someone demonstrating <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, oh, great, okay, I can still carry on piping, it's okay. So with this piping tip, what we need to do is put the fat end down onto the center mark. Okay, so whether you've made the template yourself or not. This um, 104 or there's a smaller one, a 102, they are, I think, the hardest piping tips to work with, but they actually do a lot of the flowers. So primroses, roses, um, blossoms, uh, the pansy and so on. So really, it's a good thing to master. And the best thing I can say to you is the fat end is always down on the surface and innermost. The thin end gives you the outside thin edge of the petal. And if you remember that, then you shouldn't go far wrong. So I'm holding the piping tip fat end on the center and I'm working from this line here to this line here. And I'm going to zigzag as I go. So squeeze, make contact and in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Relax the pressure and then come off in towards the uh, center of the flower. So that's giving you the beard shape, okay? Then we can um, go ahead and do the two back main petals. I'm gonna put this down for a second. Again, sorry, we've, it should reset itself. It's because I'm moving from close to far. If I take this tip off of my purple, I can just leave that there because it's not gonna be there for long. It shouldn't uh, dry out. If you were worried, you could always put a damp cloth on. And I'm going to change it onto my white buttercream, my, my, my uncolored buttercream. Okay. Now I don't have to squeeze the excess out of my bag just yet. I'm going to allow that to come out to create the head of my flower. I've got a slight problem here. That's not sticky enough. So I'm just going to abandon it. Let's just get that back on there. So I want to make two back petals. I'm gonna, they're gonna come out a little bit purple to start with. So fat end goes down in the center and I'm going to turn the nail and my hand is gonna stay in the same place. So basically when I pipe, the piping bag doesn't move any more than a little bit like this. It's actually the flower nail that does all the work. So that's my first big petal. And now I come in with the fat end again down to the surface in the center and I pipe myself a second back petal. You can see the white starting to come through. Then I can do another petal slightly smaller and then come in underneath and do another petal slightly smaller so that I've then got what looks a little bit like a pansy. And the final bit here is to get a dot in the center. So my number, I've got a one and a half for this. Um, it's got some purple in it, but I'll just show you how you change these colors out without washing, because that's the other thing you don't want to do. You don't wanna to have to keep washing your piping tips. So if you haven't got more than one and you need to work with it, what you have to do is actually squeeze out the excess in the, in the tip before you start. So what I would do is just simply squeeze out until that turns yellow, okay? It's coming through now, just make it come through a little bit more. So you don't have to wash your piping tips in between. That will do for this one, okay? So holding the bag as described, we're going to put a little center in here. So making contact with the buttercream squeeze and then I'm going to bring it towards me to create a little tail. You could do that in green as well. So that's your pansy and I'm going to show you again. Um, this time I'm going to chop, I'm going to start in white. Okay. Each time you're going to need to put a little bit of glue on there. 
All right, so now I'm kind of visualizing where my, um, my beard is gonna go. So fat end on the surface, I have actually got it held just at a slight angle there, 45 degrees. So we start, you go out, away from yourself and back together. So you end up with this frilly little skirt. Then once I've done the beard, I put that down and change out my piping tip. Now, of course, if you've got more than 104, more than one 104, then you could actually um, just keep them on the bags. That's fine. But what I like about this is if you keep changing each time, you get this whole variety of different shades, fl shade flowers. And I think that adds to it, to be honest. So fat end down in the middle, holding the piping tip up slightly at an angle, squeeze and turn the nail rather than your bag, okay? The next one will come in underneath, squeeze, turn the nail and come off. You can see the purple starting to come through now. If we go back to the first and make a second small petal, go back to underneath, and put another small petal in. And then you've already got your yellow in here. So we can just squeeze and draw down. So you get like a, it's a teardrop shape that I'm trying to achieve there, just a little dainty, okay? So um, I've got to do four or five of these and I'm gonna knock them out. So, um, while while I'm doing that, I can talk, but if you've got questions and you want to unmute yourself and ask them, then maybe now's the time because I'm pretty sure I can talk and walk. So, um, you know, if there's questions about piping flowers and stuff that you've got, then you can uh, just ask while I'm quickly doing these flowers. Uh, is the buttercream the same recipe for piping your flowers as it is for um, crumb coating your cake? Yeah, that's a really good question, Sue. So it is. Um, the, the recipe I've got today, I've actually used, I've got a kilo and a half, but I'm probably only using a kilo for this whole cake. And um, it is two blocks of butter and a kilo of icing sugar. So it's 500 grams to um and double the icing sugar yeah one to two mix i find that's perfect with a splash of water just to make it all come together in the mixer um, and then that consistency is what you need um, for piping or coating the cake um, if you add more icing sugar or add more water you're going to change the consistency and um, then of course when the room temperature changes that can cause you a problem um, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I will work with things like Swiss buttercream, um, Italian meringue, but, but I, I prefer, I keep coming back to this. Personally, I'm, um, I prefer something that's more sweet than fat. And I know that the, the Italian and the um, Swiss meringue got double the fat in it. And I just well, don't really fancy it but it does pipe smoother. It's a bit fickle. Um, you can't freeze it in like you can do this. Can you see how that, because we've got had the purple in the mm. piping tip before, you've got that edge and every single one of these pansies is gonna be different. Um, yeah, I mean, with this buttercream, you can freeze it down, uh, which is great because if you have got excess and you could freeze it down in its colors. So if you wanted to prep everything in advance, you could actually get this all done. Um, so all you've got to do is get that and the cake out of the freezer um, over the night before, probably. Let it all go back to room temperature before you start um, working with it. Anyone else got any questions? How do you stop your buttercream being really grainy? Um, it will have a grainy texture because of the icing sugar, but I have found if you use um, silver spoon instead of Tate and Lyle, it's 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 better. Um, I must admit, Tate and Lyle, you know, if you're raw icing, if, if a professional raw icers will probably 
turn in their grave if I say that I like to use silver spoon because I don't sieve it. Because <laughs> silver spoon is the one in the plastic bag taken, uh, which is um, uh, sugar beet. And uh, the Tate and Lyle is in the paper bag and that is sugar cane. Um, and when you're piping with royal icing, professional royal icers prefer the sugar cane, uh, which would be the Tate and Lyle. But I converted onto uh, silver spoon and it's much, much finer. So you might find it's a bit more absorbent that you maybe need more water, um, especially when you were making roll icing, but not a lot. Um, and you don't have to sieve it. Tate and Lyle, you have to actually blitz it in the blitzer before you sieve it even. And then you'll have to sieve it twice because it's just horrible. Um, but you can't really get away from the fine grain because it is just in the sugar. You mm. You would, um, if you want a really super smooth buttercream, then you're probably looking at uh, Swiss meringue, something like that. So I'm just gonna make a couple more of these. So has anyone got else got any questions? No such thing as a silly question, by the way. You could make these with a smaller piping tip as well, and then you get little violets. So each time I'm swapping over. So I do the beard, then I change to another color, do the back petals. And by the time you come to the front petals, the color's coming through. Then you would pipe the beard on the next one, then change your color and so on. I still can't do roses. I've tried a million times. <laughs> they are hard. They are hard. Um, they take a lot of practice. Yeah, well, I've and tried a million times. <laughs> one thing that I would say is beneficial is if you pre-ice your cones. And if they're in buttercream, you could either ice your cones the day before. Sorry, I'll just reset the camera. Ice your, um, cut your cones the day before and then um, leave them out so they dry they kind of dry out or if you need to you can um, pipe your cones and freeze them for about 10 minutes before you actually go on to pipe the petals around because if you try and pipe the cones straight away it's really difficult the other thing i found as well because they describe you know a lot of people say you should use stiff buttercream for it but I find that it's, it tears. I keep coming back to this consistency that I'm using now. And I virtually do everything with this. I don't change by adding, I don't firm it up by adding icing sugar. Lovely, that one. Yeah, this is the light and the dark purple. It's really pretty, isn't it? So I'm just going to do one more. Now I've probably got enough actually. So I'm going to show you something else. Um, let's just get a little bit of plastic cream on there. I'm going to do a primrose, but we'll do that in um, yellow. Uh, and I'll use my 104 for that because it's uh, 102 actually, which is a smaller pie picked up. It's just a bit more and it's easy to manage. And then I'll show you a blossom as well. Um, so here we go. So again, you've got the fat end in the center. Um, uh, primroses are like heart shaped petals, aren't they? And there's five. So fat end in the middle. You start to pipe and you'd come in and out and back in. So you're kind of one little zigzag, if you like. That's one petal underneath, out, back in and again. So you've got like two heart shapes, turn, Squeeze in, out, in, out, out again. And then we've got a fifth petal. So squeeze, come out, in, out, in. Okay, it's a bit frilly because it's quite difficult to do these super delicate. And that will have in a minute a, a green center or you could put a white center in there. 
So I'll just leave that off because I'm going to want to transfer a piping tip onto a different bag. You can always do your main flowers first and then come back and do the centres. So just think heart shape. This one's better. I think sometimes as well that you've got to get into a bit of a roll with them, haven't you? So there, the primroses. Just do a third one. Just make sure you put enough glue on your piping now so that it will actually hold. So fat end down in the middle, start to squeeze. It's kind of two ends. You could pipe bees wings like this. And of course, all these flowers, if you prefer to work in raw icing as a medium, do them in raw icing. Pipe them months in advance. Once they're dry, you can store them in a tin, in a, a you know a sealed tin with layers of grease proof between. And then you can go to them whenever you want. And certainly raw icing, it would work with the buttercream. It'd be quite nice to be served up something crunchy as well as all the fat that you're gonna be consuming, extra sugary. So all these skills are transferable into raw icing. So in, in this 104, I've got, uh, sorry, 102, I've actually got yellow. So I'm just squeezing through my excess until the white comes out. I'll just clean off my nail so you can see what's happening. And then I'm going to put a little bit more glue on the nail and drop my um, piece of paper on there. So now I'm going to show you a blossom, which is just five petals again, using the same piping tip. So fat end in the middle, we've got about a 45 degree angle. So it's not dead flat, it's up a little bit. So staying in the middle, squeeze and travel with the nail. The idea is to keep this hand with the piping bag dead still, but you move this, but only a little bit. So fat end down in the center, squeeze and turn and come off under the next petal, squeeze and turn and come off, squeeze and turn a little bit and come off. The last one, you have to lift your piping tip up a little bit so that you can get it in there without knocking into the first one. And there you've got a little blossom. Okay, and these look beautiful in pink as well. You probably get about two uh, goes at piping before you have to add more glue, more buttercream to your bottom of your greasy paper. And these you could do um, different colours as well. If I change this to another one, just showing you. To, um, change it onto the purple. You can see how useful these couplers are. Sorry, the blur is because we're going from close up to. Um, okay, a bit of glue on there. Buttercream. Pop on. Don't forget to put your little piece of grease proof on there, otherwise, you'll be piping directly onto your nail. So fat end in the center, squeeze, come off, two, three, four. Do you see the blue, the purple coming through now? So I'll take that one off, put another one on. We've still got enough buttercream on there to hold it. And this one now, fat end down, squeeze and turn, squeeze and turn. So you've got this white edge because that residue is still in there. So you can make little violets. Really pretty. So I'll just a couple more of those. And then I've got to put these to the freezer. And I need to boil the kettle. So we we'll just um, do that. Has anyone got any more questions about the flowers that we're piping? Quite quick, aren't they? Oops, she says, smudging the flower. 
don't worry if the, the flowers aren't perfect because when you put them in, you've got, um, you're not going to see every side of it. Okay, so I should just very quickly put a little dot in the centre of each one of these. Um, I feel like I want to, to uh, put that on my uncoloured buttercream first. And I'm just going to pipe. This will be yellow to start with because I had yellow in, in my bag and it's just a one and a half piping tip. And all I'm going to do is put that to the centre of my flower. Just right in there and squeeze and stay and then stop and come away. Squeeze, stay, stop, come away. That way you don't get like a long sausage. Okay. Um, so we'll go in again, squeeze, stay there, relax the pressure and come off. I know this isn't overly close for you. Um, and these ones here, these little, they normally have green in the middle, but I'm going to have to cheat. Oops. So in the centre, squeeze. Little dot in the centre. So I'm not going to worry too much about the technical correct colour, but they're, they're kind of lime green in the middle. And for you, if you were at home, you wouldn't have to lift these up. You would just simply have them on your tray and go ahead and um, pipe them on there. Now these ones, if you want to make these different, you could pipe three stamens, but if you squeeze and then draw the tip up, as you'll keep squeezing, you're gonna end up with little peaks. Um, so there's lots you can do. So in. Very little, just keep squeezing as you draw up to get the height. So they're like little legs. Okay. So those I'm just going to run and put those in the freezer. And, and that's what you do. You type them, you can leave them out. If you left them out in a cake box, for a couple of days, they would crust over and dry. Um, you've got to be mindful, though, that you know they will. You, you don't want them to go. You don't, they are food, and if you're going to present them and be served, you don't want them stored for a month because it's, at the end of the day, it's butter. All right, so we've got all our flowers on there, and I'm just going to go and put that in the freezer. I've got to switch the kettle on because I need some hot water and I'm going to retrieve my cake. Um, so I'll let you talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Thought she was going to make us all a cup of tea. <laughs> Anna makes it look so easy and um, I'm thinking, gosh, I'm sure it's not as easy as it looks. I don't practice enough, that's the trouble. If I've got to make a cup of tea, it'll be about an hour, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at making cups of tea. Hannah? Yeah? Can you tell me what do you use to colour your buttercream with, please? Because it's... Um, yeah, I use the spectral paste colours. Spectral paste. Um, and I've used tonight. I've used uh, grape violet, um, uh, gooseberry green, melon yellow. Because you can use gel colours. Yeah, don't you? I mean, I've got um, the colour mill, some of the colour mill, but for chocolate. Okay. 
and um, I think you can use it for buttercream. You, you don't need that much. I mean, when I used um, some, uh, I tried to color some uh, modeling paste because it's always creamy if it's chocolate and I put the white in and it got really white. Oh, lovely. Um, is it something that has to be melted, Christine? Uh, no, you, you just use it from, uh, like a little dropper from the bottle. Okay, then yes, that will be, that will work. Absolutely, because it's fat based. I mean, any colour, the only thing it doesn't, is not very good is petal dust. It just doesn't mix in very well. It's no. very blobby. I'm just going to retrieve yeah. my hot water. Sorry, won't be second. just another question please yes yeah, sure sure um you know if you want to make blue if you you know the buttercream is always sort of slightly yellow yes how do you make it blue blue does it That's always a go really green? good question um okay so the way i uh, i try and avoid the true blues and reds if you want a true blue and a red you can't start with cream you've got to change it to white Okay, so you either do that through food coloring. Um, there's a product called titanium dioxide. Just going to increase the size. I've just got to adjust my camera slightly. Um, titanium dioxide is a product that's actually added to a lot of food. Uh, it is a chemical at the end of the day. So um, the the best way to get white icing is to use tracks. Um, and if you use Trex, you can uh, create a white buttercream and then you'll be able to color it true blue or true red. Yes. If you haven't got a white base buttercream and you try and color blue or red, you're going to end up with um, aqua and rust yes. because you're starting from cream. So what I would normally do, for because I don't really like Trex buttercream, I hate it because it doesn't set. Um, I don't like the taste so much. So what I would do is make up my batch of white buttercream and I'd use it when I need white, when I need blue, when I need red. And I use normal, well, my normal recipe. So the half butter to two, you know, one part butter to two parts um, icing sugar when for everything else. That's Thank what I you. Do. But you can get colours, you can get whitening agents, but they're all chemicals. It's all e-numbers, all additives. Mm. Um, I'll try right. the cornmeal and see if that works because you don't need a huge amount. Yeah. So I'll try that and see, you know, when I make buttercream. Just another quick question, Hannah, sorry to, you know, for everybody else. Are you still inspired creations for your email? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Probably what I'll do um, Chris, uh, for Christine is when I send the link, I'll just send a little contact bit there. So if, if you have got questions that we're not answering tonight, then um, you can email me and also have a look at the website because if there's any classes you fancy, um, there's lots on there. Mo most of my classes are short, you know, two and a half, two, two hours, two hours, two and a half hours or three hours, depending on what you're learning. And they're not expensive. Um, the, you know they're very good value you get a video and everything uh, but there's a couple of one days I think Christine was saying that she's going to come on my my bunny rabbit the sculpting uh, workshop where you learn how to make armature out of wires as well so, lovely thanks Hannah. September um, okay so what I'm going to do if everyone's okay hopefully no one needs a wee break if you do need a loo break <laughs> just go don't don't tell me just go um, don't suffer. <laughs> um, 
I've got a hot knife with cake. Now there's two reasons. One is to flatten the blemishes. So any lumps and bumps. I'm only softening the top surface. I'm not trying to scrape um, buttercream off. I have to soften the whole thing, but just the top of the buttercream layer that you've put on. And I've got two knives because it's quicker. One's heating while the other one is smoothing. Now, not only are you flattening the areas that you don't like, you are also making the buttercream tacky. And if you don't make the buttercream sticky, your outer coat will not stick because it doesn't know what to do if it's dry, okay? Now, sometimes if you have a very cold fridge and you go and it's very hot when you take it out, it will make itself tacky, but mostly it'll feel quite dry. So you've got to soften and just check that every part of the cake, top and sides, has been rubbed over with those with that hot knife. But you'll notice as well that I'm drying the knife because I don't want to add the moisture. I don't want it too wet. I just want the heat from the knife. Okay. And I would say as well that you only need maybe one piece of kitchen towel at a time um because if you've got too much it's just it's very wasteful because you, you don't um you'll end up throwing it away before you've used the equivalent anyway so just one piece of towel at a time okay so i'm using the flat side i'm not trying to scrape it i'm putting the whole knife flat side on get to the exciting bits now Once I've hot knife this all around, I'm going to prepare the um, in part here, ready to receive the flowers, which have to go in before you put the outside coat on. And that's the fascinating bit, because when you put all your flowers in, you have to make sure that nothing sticks out, because if it does, when you scrape it, you're going to scrape the flowers away. Okay, just take a bit of care that you don't dislodge the uh, top layer because this feels a bit loose on here. So just take a bit of care doing this. Make sure you don't push the top sideways. And then you've got to come to the bottom tier. If, if you need to, you can do it like this as well. Okay, if it's easier. Only the sides and the top. We don't need to do this part here. So you probably get, I don't know, two or three ups and downs before you have to change knives. But we must make sure that you're quite systematic when you do this because if you haven't got it tacky it won't stick and I did I found this out by mistake because uh, it was actually a sh one of the shows I was demonstrating trying to pipe sunflowers onto the side of a cake and um, I pre it was a dummy but I pre buttercreamed and I just took it to the shower and started piping. And as one, but as I finished one sunflower and started the next, the first one fell off. <laughs> and I just thought, oh no, what do I do? Because like, there's all these people watching and I can't fix this. And then when I sat and thought about it, I thought, well, of course, because it didn't, it didn't know to stick, did it? So that was a bit of a disaster. Okay, so that's feeling all nice and sticky now. now I'm just going to clean up. Make sure I haven't got any crumbs on here because we're going to scrape along this area in a little while. So I'm just going to transfer. And I know tonight as well, especially when 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 we when I'm teaching flowers on modelling, things are quite static. But I am conscious of the fact that we're up and down, and the background is messy, and it's just, it's not um, not everything is like <laughs> as it normally is. 
but I think that's probably a better view, even though you've got a really bad background, just don't look. <laughs> okay, screen. <laughs> Every house should have one. Okay, so we've got our gap. We've hot knived. So this is all ready to receive the final coat later on. But now we need to actually prepare the base for where our flowers are going to go. And what we do is we pipe blobs. And I have got, um, I will uh, email as well all the piping tips we've used tonight, but I've got a number 18 here, which is a big one, writer. Okay, so I'm just going to put that on my white. And randomly, holding the bag in the same way, we're going to make little domes. I'm not going to use all my white up. So, and this is what the flowers are going to be attached to. I'm going to change from this tip. And I'll look at my piping bags and think, well, I've got quite a bit of purple left and I'm probably not going to need that. So we can change on uh, the, the same piping tip, the number 18, or if you've got a 12, the, the same, uh, Wilton 12, PME 18. And then we keep piping blobs. So these you'll probably see a bit more clearly now. Because if you don't do this, you're not allowing the flowers to come out far enough. It's a bit of a dare thing, this. It's like, how far, how far do I push it sort of thing? Okay. And then I'm going to drop out the piping tip again. And put it onto my dark green, just because I've got a lot of dark green. So that's going to come out now. See, you, you haven't got a huge number of gaps. But if you, you're lacking flowers, this is going to add to it. OK, so now we've got all our blobs in there. Technical term blobs. I'm just going to lower this camera so you can see that just a little bit better. Sorry if anyone's feeling seasick. OK, now I'm going to run and retrieve my flowers. 30 seconds. Now the flowers have been in the freezer for what, 10 minutes max? They're hard at the moment, but they won't be for long. So you have to work quick or put them back in the freezer, okay? So I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna pick them up with no fuss. They're semi-frozen and you'll peel them off. So these are the ones I made with you watching. And we push them in. So you want them to go in so they're flush. So do have them come out a little way, but not so that they're sticking out of this layer of the cake, the side of the cake. So if we space, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to decorate the whole thing. Space those out, change the angle. I'm doing this fairly quickly so they don't melt. I'd be careful with handling them. And to be honest, they, even if you had them in there for about half an hour, they're still gonna probably melt quite quickly if it's hot. Once they're in, they're safe, but it's just your handling with the warm, the warmth of your, of your hands. Just try and change the angle that you put them in. They're starting to soften already. See, now this 
in a live situation in a hall it would not have been so easy. I would have had to get a freezer bag. Okay, and then I've got my blossoms. So now we're just filling in the gaps. Try not to spend too long debating with yourself over where they've got to go because you'll have to put them back in the freezer and try and balance the design out as best you can. Now the primroses are going in, which will give it a pop of yellow. I've got to be careful because I haven't got many of those. So we'll just try and position them fairly around. I've only got three, whoops. Decided not to stick. You might have to kind of dig them into the buttercream blobs that you've made. So if you pop that one in there, one more blossom. Uh, where do I want that? Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. in there. Okay, so nothing's stuck out at the moment. It's all flat in there, but you can see that. It's pretty spectacular now, doesn't it? I'm pleased with that. Hannah, you, you didn't pop nicely dummy, so why does the buttercream stick to that? I didn't hot knife. The dummy, or did you? Ah, oh, um, so the dummy I didn't hot knife, but I put all those blobs in and they're not dry. Right, but how yeah. do the blobs stick to the dummy? Um, they just have. Right. Okay. Right. And I suppose in a way, because they're small and not big and heavy. Yeah. Because if you've got flowers, they're more likely to drop off if then if if you haven't got a tacky surface. But yeah, you're you're right. Yeah. Um, but it is it is holding, so we're okay. Just don't don't tempt. Don't tempt the fate. <laughs> yeah, my, my buttercream ask. as well. Sorry? Pretend I didn't ask then. No, no, you're fine. Um, the buttercream that I'm piping with now is super, super soft as well because it's hot in here. So that will add to the stickiness. So I've got um, a leaf, a leaf um, tip in my uh, piping bag now, which is if you haven't seen one of these before, it's got like a, a V shape in it, cut out, and that's held on the side as you pipe. And when you pipe with it, if you put one of the pointed ends down onto the surface and squeeze out the buttercream till you get the width of the leaf, and then you carry on squeezing as you draw backwards to give yourself a little leaf with a center vein. Okay, so that's. Um, I've got dark green and I've got a small piping tip in here. This is a ST51. And I'm going to go in and this one, actually, I'm going to change that slightly. I'm going to work with my, no, that is the large one, I beg your pardon. I wanted the large one in first because that's going to give me my pansy leaf. And I'm going to make a big leaf. So I've just shown you how it works, but the pointy end goes onto the surface, we squeeze. And then if I judder, so I push in and come back, I can make myself a little ruffled leaf as well. And we'll treat those as the, um, the pansy leaves quite big. So going in, just choose where you want, and then you're kind of pushing in and out, in and out, in and out as you go. We'll just get this a bit closer if you can come down a little bit with the camera. I'm trying to get my best shot for you. Maybe that'll help. Sorry, close your eyes for a moment. It's worth the wait, I promise. Okay, so in here. Squeeze in, out, in, out, in, out. So everywhere there's a pansy and you can come in at different angles if you want to, which I'll do in a moment. This is 
go another big one in here because of course we have got gaps so we need to fill those gaps so i'm filling the big gaps with the dark green just twisting my bag because it's it needs to be tighter And then change over to your paler green. If I try and turn this around so you can see. So I'm making slightly smaller ones now with an ST51. So come in here because that pale green gives it some interest. And these are smaller. Make sure you twist the bag so you, you, your wrist is not straining. This is a little bit stiff. And you've got to remember that the pointed cutout, the, the V cutout is on the side. If it's not on the side, you won't get that central line. So I can put one in here, so I'm just gonna spend another moment or two doing this everything again is within don't forget to go up in as well because those two tones of green really make it interesting what number was the first tip hannah uh, the first one was the bigger one which is the three five uh, 352 and this one is an ST51. Okay. Which is smaller. The 352 is a Wilton and the ST51 is a PME. So I think you could do more decoration up in up in there but bearing in mind you can't see that on screen i'm not going to go there i think we we've got enough so i can move on to the next bit so in the time that i've literally you've seen this it's, it's come together which is really exciting because it's actually not as time consuming as you might think especially not as time consuming as making a icing a cake or making sugar flowers so what I've got now in a pot is 300 grams of pre-coloured buttercream. And this is, I'm just going to use my knife to mix this. And now this needs to go in the microwave, which is right by me. But I'll leave the picture, I'll leave my cake on the screen while I'm just softening this slightly more. What I'm doing is I, I've got this on, that was five, uh, I counted to seven on uh, defrost. Only seven and it's, it's soft enough. Just moving my stuff out of the way. Uh, I will leave this cake as well, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> so um, I've literally counted to seven in the microwave and that is pretty much soft. Okay, so you want something that will spread, but you don't want to melt it. Once you melt buttercream, you've got no chance, you can't use it. Um, and that's another good reason why you should make up your batches, separate your buttercream rather than zap the whole lot just in case. I'm just stirring. A circular motion. I don't want to whip it. I'm not trying to add air and we can mash it against because we want to get the most of this air out so that you haven't got lots of air bubbles when you scrape. Although from a time point of view, I'm probably not going to spend too much time doing this uh, just so that we can get to the end uh, so you can see the whole project come together. Okay, so 
it has still got some air bubbles in it, but I'm going to go with it. Who's coming round to clear up? <laughs> I'll make you a cup of tea. <laughs> mess okay so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to bring this back in and i'm going to adjust the camera again so close your eyes if you're feeling seasick thank goodness for a side view eh? there okay i've stopped fiddling now we've got to uh, ice this I'm going to start with the top because I'm not brave enough. And when you're doing this, you are putting a thick coat on. Take care because this, you don't want the lid to come off. You don't want the top cover to come off. And I've also got to make sure that I've actually got enough here. I'm just going to stand up for this bit. So we're just going to start to very lightly spread that on. The idea being that you don't touch the crumb coat underneath. Okay, if you don't make contact with the knife on the crumb coat, then you're not going to pull crumbs through. And this technique is applied when you want to buttercream coat a cake, um, when it's just going to be buttercream coated. Let's make sure that doesn't fall over my, my design. And I would say don't go for smooth perfect because it's actually really difficult to achieve. I'm going to start spreading the sides now. Thickish layer, one that you can scrape. And when you scrape, you will get excess come into the bottom here, and that's what make it, makes it look like a fault line. Okay, so keep going. Hold your knife fairly vertical so that you're getting a similar thickness of buttercream spreaded all the way around the thickness here. So keeping your knife straight. Knife's at a little bit of an angle like this, then you're going to end up having less buttercream at the top and a bit of an angle to the side of your cake. So take your time doing this because we don't want too much hanging down because we're going to dis the, the decoration will disappear. So it's probably at least half a centimetre thick. Maybe a bit more. It's not low fat, that's for sure. Just going round to check that I have got a similar thickness all around. I am going to use a scraper. Ideally, I don't want to touch the top. I just want to um, add where I need. And then we're going to work on this bottom in the same way. I shouldn't make contact with my flowers, but I need to make sure I don't. So if you need to, you can just add it on in patches like this. and then come back to spread it. Just work it up 
to the edge. When you scrape, it will go over the edge. It's at this point where you think, oh, what am I doing? Like, you know, I've made this beautiful inner part of my cake. Do I really want to ruin it now? And actually, I have to say, I think you could probably do a semi-naked cake like this, couldn't you? And just have those flowers in there. Didn't look too bad, did it? The semi-naked, you'd crumb coat and then you coat again, but you do just a light, light coat. You don't um, put it on thick like this. Are the semi-naked naked cakes still very popular? I think so. Yeah. Certainly not as fattening. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't like the fondant do they no a lot of people honestly it's um yeah it's been killed off it's interesting though because i think square cakes are coming back and what we need is for fruit cakes to come back so i'm just going to go all the way around finish it off and then i'll just show you the scraping technique to end and there's um a bit of silver paint to, to do as well which it's probably better done when it's set but it can be done once it, um, when it's still wet so i've got a very it's very roughly coated all the way around and i'm not going to spend too much time on the scraping um i just want to show you the, the technique okay so i have i've got a taller scraper here um this is an eight eight or nine inch one I'd have to check to make make sure um, you can use this this one because it is also just about the right height this is a little bit harder the long one is actually quite hard to work with I'm going to work with this small one so when you're scraping this would be the same for um, a cake that hasn't got a fault line in it as well so what we do is you hold your scraper upright, push it into the buttercream. If I just change angle, just get my mouse, change angle, I'm gonna, it's gonna make you feel sick because you've got, um, the camera's not quite there. Let me move this into the middle. I want to show you the angle of the scraper, okay? If you notice on here, if you're right-handed, it would be that way, okay? So you've got a 45 degree angle, dead upright and flat on the board. That's how you hold it. If I just change the angle of the camera again, sorry. So I've got my knife, a uh, scraper, I'm going to hold on. So I'm standing here and I'm going to have my scraper at 12 o'clock. I hold on here. I hold the scraper in the center of the cake. So if you had the tall scraper, if it was right up here, you still hold it where the middle of the cake is to control it. And then with your hand holding the scraper still, so I'm just, I'm not actually gonna do this for a moment, I'm just gonna demo it. Um, I hold my hand with the scraper and I use the other hand to turn until I get to about quarter to one o'clock. And at that point, my hand would then come to, okay? because you're not trying to, you, you're this, it, it scrapes because you're turning the turntable, not because you're turning the scraper. So that just stays in place for most of it. Now, I'll do it once this way and then I'll um, change camera angle for you. Okay, so holding in the center of the cake, support the board, hold the scraper at a 45 degree angle, nice and upright, and then you start to scrape all the way around okay and you're probably gonna have to do two or three scrapes to get that 
to resemble what you're wanting. And that's all I'm going to do tonight. I'm not going to be too fussy with it. Um, if you find after a while, though, that your buttercream's starting to set, you can actually warm up your scraper. Just get a bowl of hot water and warm it up. This will fit in a bowl of hot water. The long one won't. So this one, if you're using it, you're going to need to find maybe a heat gun or a hairdryer and actually warm the blade up so that instead of it dragging, it's going to sort of partially melt the um, buttercream as it goes round. OK, so one more scrape, probably best from this. So I'm, I'm here. Twelve o'clock is where I'm holding here. My right hand is not going to stop. It's going to do a full 360. And then I come off. So my scrape is brought towards me as we do it. OK. And I've got to say, I'm probably going to stop there. Now, the interesting thing is that you have a choice. You can actually clean all of this off if you want to, in the same way as I described earlier when we were trying to do sharp buttercream edge. Um, the other thing to say is that each time you use the scraper, clean it off, okay? Um, but if you leave that jagged edge, yeah, I'm feeling I want, my head's saying do another, another scrape, also my heart's saying do another scrape. Let's do it. If I try a different angle, you might just see what's happening from the top. We'll do that, but I should probably stop. Ah, okay. See, my heart wanted to do another scrape. My head was saying don't, and it's dislodged the top. Listen to your head, not your heart. I would mean, need more time. If um, I need to, I can add more buttercream on. I could also refrigerate it and hot knife it to help smooth it. But I'm not, in the time we've got, I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to leave it like that. Let's just change the camera. Okay. So I'm going to pick my best side, which is probably this. I don't like that bit. So let's move that off. So now we've got all our flowers in the centre of your buttercream coated cake. And the last bit I wanted to show you was this uh, metallic silver paint. Um, it's by Rainbow Dust. And if we give that a bit of a shake, it's water based. And I've got just a paint palette down here. Just pour a little bit of that. Oop, comes out really fast. You actually don't need that much. I'm just going to locate the brush and show you how we get the edging. So with this, you probably let your cake set for a little while. Bring this closer so you can see. So you could clean all this off at the top, but I have to say that it actually, um, I, I think it looks better with it on. And if this was firm, then my silver wouldn't move. The, the When I paint, this buttercream won't move, but I just want to show you. You just load up the brush just slightly and catch the edge. Let's see if it works. Um, and within an, an hour, even well, out of the fridge, you, you will find that this will crust out over enough for you to be able to do this, or you could store it in the fridge for uh, 10 minutes or so, and then it would be set enough for you to do that. But you can see that that will just takes the eye off the messy top edge and just adds some detail. In the picture, I had put silver leaf on the side once your buttercream is dry. You could just put a bit of silver leaf on here. You could even put little um, sugar pearls. Um, so there's a lot, lot of decoration you can do. I'm just going to do the best side so you've got it as a view. And then do this bottom edge as well. 
And this cake, you've got um, the nine inch board under there. If you've attached the this, this little six inch board that's under here to the nine inch board with chocolate, then you can take it off. And this could be displayed on a pedestal stand or stacked on top of another cake. Um, as it is, this one's been stuck on with double sided tape, so I wouldn't want to actually go ahead and take that off there. It would be too much of a disruption for the um, for the cake itself. But in the meantime, I'm just going to clean this up. So I'm not going to spin it 360 because it's not pretty all the way around, but hopefully, oops, oh no, hopefully this is giving you. a really good idea on how you get flowers inside and create a fault line cake. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. It's definitely, when you demo, there's no chance of getting this perfect. So I'm, I'm accepting that. <laughs> <laughs> so has anyone got any questions? You can Hannah? Yeah. Could you put, I'm not very good at royal icing flowers and I've never really attempted buttercream flowers. Could you put sugar flowers in? I know you've got the problem of putting it in the fridge because the sugar flowers will probably wilt. But is there something else you could put in? Um, well, if, you, if you're using sugar flowers, see if, um, I wouldn't put this back in the fridge now. This would stay out. So um, it doesn't matter. You could use sugar flowers, yeah. Of course. Um, does this because you could just leave it straight into the dummy. Sorry? You could put the sugar flour straight into the dummy, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. Into the you? separator. Yeah, or you could right. use um, raw icing to, so if you don't um, put buttercream around the edge of your separator, you could raw ice and that would attach them to the separator. The only reason I've put buttercream around that piece of polystyrene is so that I can't see polystyrene, but it's so packed full that um, it probably won't, it probably doesn't show anyway. But it's really beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Really, Just don't really get too close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Thank you very much, Sue and Christine, for allowing me to come in because it's, it's the first time I've ever seen one done. It's, it's really lovely. I've, I've been, I felt, feel privileged to be asked. <laughs> no, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. You could put silk flowers in it as well, couldn't you? Yeah, anything. And it doesn't have to be flowers. You could just put like little rosettes in there and things like that. You could pre-pipe, if, pre if you are using buttercream, if you pre-pipe little rosettes, you could just put those in, or you could put macaroons in, or you could do <gasps> little, um, little, little, um, what are the kisses that are made out of um, meringue? Meringue. Yeah. Uh, uh, little su sweets. You could do smarties, or you know, there's just so much scope. It's just I like flowers. Mm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, in less than two hours. I know, Sheila, I wasn't sure. <laughs> As you can see, I've got a mess behind me. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome, Bevy. I'd just like to say, um, on behalf of everybody, um, a big thank you to Hannah for demonstrating for us tonight. And um, I hope our visitors have enjoyed it as much as, um, as our members have. And um, hopefully you'll join us again for some, um, some more of our meetings if you'd like to. Because um, it's always nice to have a nice big audience for mm. our demonstrators rather than just a few people, I'm sure. Though